Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 26th T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. 26 weeks, that's half a year. I don't know that I really believed I was still going to be doing this after half a year. I'm wondering, am I still going to be doing this after one year? We'll find out. So, last week it was a big update across all the fronts uh, and introducing this idea of the worms movable linked list kind of structures. Uh, um, that was quite a bit of fun. A lot of people uh, looked at it, kind of engaged in it. Uh, Andrew Walpole has already updated whoops, his MFM.rocks simulator. Uh, so it now has a version of the worms here. We can use like N, yeah, N and make a worm. His worms are actually quite a bit more elusive and hard to catch than the ones I was showing last week. They can You can build walls around them and they jump right out. Uh, but uh, they're quite a bit of fun. And I'm still thinking that we're going to get quite a bit of mileage out of these worms in all sorts of different contexts. I want to figure out ways to make the software underneath them um, easier to reuse so that we'll be able to get more mileage out of the whole idea. Uh, um, but I'm still kind of excited about that. Didn't push on it a whole lot this week. Hope to come back to it soon. So where we left off was we were struggling with are we going to be able to do this Rojas reduction of hazardous substances when we actually make the boards using lead-free solder is kind of what it boils down to. Uh, um, and uh, ETS, uh, th that doing that is, is not necessarily that easy for them given the uh, particular equipment they have. Uh, so I was uh, looking for uh, other places in Albuquerque that uh, might be able to do it. Uh, I did get uh, quotes. <laughs> uh, they were not so compelling that uh, it was a slam dunk, let's switch. Especially because um, ETS stepped up and so even though it's more work because basically they're going to need to hand solder the through hole parts uh to do lead free uh they're going to do it at the price that we had talked about uh several months ago so i think that's pretty much a lock as far as i'm concerned uh, um ETS for the win. Uh, I've gotten with UNM to get this whole purchase order thing set up so that we can actually get them paid. Uh, there's any number of things that can go wrong, as we've already seen all the way along, but uh, it's possible we'll actually start to get these tiles assembled as soon as next week. Perhaps not before I talk to you again, but in the, the week coming after the, the next episode, we shall see. That has been a very long road. Um, what else? Um, oh, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> the 3D printing. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're as tired of this as I am, uh, but here's the news on that front. Um, I was getting these erm intemperers that was causing me to lose prints, and it was very frustrating, and I tried to talk to the warranty people at Prusa Research, and they were telling me I had to take the board apart so that I could look at this thing, and I was trying to look at it, and it really looked fine, and I was much more concerned with this uh, uh, little place where the cable containing the power supply to heat up the bo the print bed so that the prints will stick better and stay flatter because um, it seemed to me that it was something wrong there and uh, I had opened it up I had fiddled around with it I had closed it back up I closed it back up and, and then it had seemed it was actually working again I was getting successful prints of three avoiding that back corner because that seemed to cause more trouble uh, um, and I got several good prints out of it uh, oh yeah and, and actually last the as I was recording <laughs> 
<laughs> last week's T Tuesday update the uh the a triple three cases were printing in the background, which I'm not I'm gonna try to avoid doing. I'm not printing anything right now, for example, because when I listened to last week's episode in the uh with the headphones, it was kind of uh, aggravating because I could hear that meh, meh, meh in the background. Uh, uh but in fact this was what was printing. Um and in fact it finished successfully uh with like, you know, a foot of filament left on the thing. So that was pretty good because I don't trust the filament out sensor on this, so I didn't need to. Uh, uh, however, uh, and I got, an, I got another one eight hours later and another one eight hours after that. It was great uh, uh, until it wasn't. The Ur temp ed, min temp ed error came back. This one was not very terrible. It was, you know, barely started the print, so that was great. But then uh, shortly thereafter, uh, I had just changed the reel and was working on it. And this one, uh, this one lost about six hours of printing time plus a lot of plastic to get it Ur min temp error. So at this point, you say, well, come on. I cannot keep doing this if this thing cannot get fixed. Uh, either I have to send it in, I have to give it to somebody, or at this point, in the Ackley family, there's this thing that, that once we declare an appliance officially dead, so that, like, you know, first do no harm, well, now I can't do any harm because it's officially dead, then I can go in and I can screw with it, and sometimes it actually comes back to life. This is the reanimator. Well, so the Prusa i3 Mark III was getting to the point of being declared dead. So, uh, well, first I took some of the Kapton tape and I wrapped it all around the thing, trying to keep the thing from flexing as much, because that really seemed to be where the problem was. And in fact, this was just the reverse. So uh, taping it up like this meant I got er min temp er errors almost immediately, and even before I had tried to print anything and so forth. So on the one hand, that's like, oh, terrible. But on the other hand, that was basically all but proving that I was right, that it was that th something about the uh, cable uh, bed interface that was causing the trouble. So uh, I went back, I took a look at it, I opened it up again. This time I did not get deterred by the fact that the the fabric uh, cable wrapping was sort of sealed down at the end. I just cleared it out, opened it up, and sure enough, right in there, the the this uh, double black cable is the thermistor sensor wires. The big heavy red and black cable is the power cable for heating the bed, and that went right through it. And right there, it was really squeezing the thermistor cable. I opened it up, and 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 right here, it's like basically where you broken your arm, and you can feel it's floppy. You know, the it's stranded wire, but you could feel like, oh man, this thing has really been under stress. Well, so since it's dead, uh, I opened them up, uh, uh, I cut one, and I also took it out from being in between these two things. It's like that didn't seem to be doing anybody any favors. Uh, I stripped the ends, I got some uh, uh, stranded wire of my own, cut, cut a few pieces, uh, fired up the soldering iron, twisted the new piece of wire on, soldered it down, uh, uh, crimped the things in a little bit, uh, uh, used the hot air gun uh, with some heat shrink tubing, and made a replacement little jumper. Uh, uh, did the same thing for the other wire, uh, soldered it up, uh, heat shrunk it down, closed the whole thing up. At this point, I left the textile cable wrap. For, I didn't try to stuff it through the hole. I couldn't believe that it's better if I did, because it would kind of keep the wires from flexing quite as much. But I just as soon see, see it, if they're actually getting flexed so much that they're going bad. And uh, here it is back mounted up again, where you, now you can see the cables that you couldn't before. And I got a beautiful print, no problem. Uh, eight hours later, I got another one. After that, I said, hey, let's try the four up again. And 10 hours, well, 10 and a half hours, I had four up. I'm using the entire print bed again. This thing is fixed as far as the ermin temp bed error goes. It's still got the problem with the print fan thing being mistakenly detected as not running. I'll bet you a buck that it's the same kind of problem up in the extruder head, but since there's a software switch to say, don't bother checking the print fan, at the moment I'm just saying don't bother checking the print fan, let's go. So, uh, uh, and then another. 
four more. So now they're coming out. Uh, and so that's pretty good. I think, you know, I didn't want to get want to go to this next level of relationship with my uh printer uh but i have now done so so i think we're going to be able to finish that except for the fact that there's a ton of wasted plastic i put it in order to get another couple of rolls of the prusament galaxy blacks the same stuff that we're doing uh, um that hasn't shipped yet but it should be shipping reasonably soon hopefully before we run out of the last reel that we got here now so that's good uh, um on the uh rest of the parts in addition to the cases the main thing was these glow rods this was a picture i showed uh back in february when i had just cut a bunch of acrylic rods into these little pieces so that one one piece goes over each led which is way down at the bottom of the circuit board and the light comes up to the top of th going through the uh, acrylic rod using internal reflection uh, um so each case each case needs two of these things things i had a bag full of these things in february uh, uh by the end of march uh, i had run dry ordered another set of them from amazon they showed up in this past week i cut a bunch more and we're back in business on the glow rods as well so really you know things going pretty good as far as finishing up the physical hardware uh that stuff the cases that we can do aside from the circuit board assembly the one other main thing that we do have is the inter tile connectors we need the tiles we need the connectors between them i also showed this uh earlier in the year uh back when uh, we were dealing with the uh, uh, analog signal noise that we hadn't diagnosed correctly so i was trying to make an inter tile connector that had this special little mouth to put down an array of serial resistors which series resistors which in the end i thought were actually not necessary so last week i sent off a a, a cleaned up version that got rid of the series resistor network in the middle and just generally simplified things and cleaned it up uh, and those things arrived from osh park as well uh, in another one of their perfect little perfect purple packages uh, uh, and here they are <clears throat> got nine of them uh, and they're, they're pretty much the same things that we saw before, except they have actual less on them since there's no component. Each one of these things takes two of these uh, keyed headers. This is what it looks like when the, the headers are just sitting through the thing before they've been soldered up. Um, after they've soldered up and flipped it over, T212PD, power and data. These are the full connectors that we use within the Lotus, the where we're sharing power and data. We're going to have the DOs, the data only, that we use between the Lotuses. Separate from these, also have to deal with them. There's a lot more PDs than DOs, so deal with the PDs first. Uh, so I soldered up three of them. Uh, um, here they are. Uh, um, and here's one of them um, in uh plugged into the position in a tile and you can see the thing is way below the the tile the tile surface so if you had another tile coming in here there's like no way you're going to be able to get these things out that's why we have the 3d printed holders here are three of them these were stuff that had been printed up ages ago that had just been sitting in a box uh, uh each one of these things consists of three pieces it's got the finger tab that you grab onto it's got the loop that goes around the uh circuit board and then it's got the little cap that goes on top and so here it is here's the loop going around the circuit board uh, um it, it's actually keyed the loop has a little notch in it there to line up with the notch that uh the keyed header has now this actually was showing that there was a bit of a problem that when i tried to get the uh the u to go through the slot in the circuit board it was really tight and i'm not exactly sure why it was so tight just on one side um so that may need to be revised uh, i could either make the 3d printing width a little bit less but i don't want to do that because i need the strength strength uh, but if I make the gap in the circuit board wider then I lose copper which I wouldn't really like either so I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do there but eventually I managed to get it seated all the way down here's the U thing all pulled all the way through here's the finger tab with the holes that those things are gonna go up through it's hard to tell but if you look here 
uh, right here, there's actually a notch in one of the, the finger holes, the, the one of the, the, the U tabs that comes up, but not in the other one that actually keys into a slot on the finger tab. So in fact, this thing actually only orients one way, at least when the 3D printing is being accurate enough. Uh, uh, so it goes in and the two uh, sides of the U come up through the thing and they're sticking in there. And then finally the cap goes in and it pushes the uh, U's out and locks them into the tab so that you can't pull the thing off. It, it works pretty well. And here's the, the, the cap going on that pushes the uh, U arms apart. And there it is completely seated. Okay. And so here's a final completely assembled one with the uh, U-strap going down around the piece, the finger tab up on top, and the cap holding it all together. Uh, uh, another angle. Uh, and here you can kind of see how it, uh, yeah, how it, how it jumps around the uh, key in the header. Uh, um, and here's what it looks like from the side. Uh, um, I feel all right about these things, although, I mean, they are kind of tall. So it, it's, it's one of these sort of function, fu function versus vision sort of things, right? I mean, as it stands now, these, the, uh, these things stick up a fair bit above the uh, surface of the tile, which in a way is inelegant, and if you have a low angle vision on it, it kind of gets in the way. But on the other hand, the whole point is, is that you need to be able to grab it so that you can pull it out. It needs to go up above the level of the tile. So I think it's all right. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, and here's another one where it was really kind of jammed coming through. I had to push more than I wanted to. And in fact, I busted one of the U's uh, right across the part where it's the thinnest, where it's cut away to go around the asymmetric key. So that's a problem. So either I have to, if I make the uh, cut wider, then I'm going to lose copper. And this copper is actually carrying uh, power or ground uh, back and forth. So I don't want to lose more than I need to. We'll see what I'm going to do about that. Uh, um, all right, and uh, uh, okay, so we're six months in. In the next six months, well, I would like to say I think at this point we have maybe a month, a month and a half, two months tops. We should have the boards assembled with the cases, with power supplies, with inner tile connectors, so that it's going to be much more a matter of software. There's a lot to do on infrastructure software, let alone the higher level stuff like the worms and the cells and all that stuff, which is what I really want to get to. Certainly by the end of the year, I want to be up at worms and cells on the grid. I would like to, uh, we were talking about this uh, some in the past week in the chat room about ways of maybe being able to live stream the grid and being, let, be, being able to get people to maybe sign up to run their stuff on the grid and then see it live stream back, something like that. Uh, I want to get as many people involved as possible. I would like, in fact, to figure out a way, if it would help, if there would be people people who would be interested in people who might be willing to invest some time and effort to sort of do a, uh, a programming class online, a sort of, you know, here's how to program in Ulam, or here's what we know about how to program in Ulam and Splat. Uh, uh, if you are willing to spring for a, uh, a Raspberry Pi to run the simulator, if you haven't got a, a, a Unix box, a Linux box of your own, you know, okay, you're going to have to invest 40 bucks or something like that uh, uh, to get the hardware to run it on. But then maybe we could meet weekly and, and try to get exercises and so on and so forth, kind of make our own little class to see if we couldn't learn how to program this stuff. I would like to explore that if there's any interest. I don't know. Uh, um, but we've come an awful long way in a half a year. Uh, I feel good about where we've gotten to. Uh, um, and it's not an anniversary. It's a half an anniversary, but it's sort of like a happy tea Tuesday. This is from last year, but I don't think I ever showed the picture before. So I think we're doing great. Uh, if we can build this grid and get it running in a month, month and a half, two months tops, that'll be good. And then we can move back towards software and maybe, you know, I would be happy if we can get to the point where we can declare victory on T Tuesday updates and say, you know, let's have a series finale and then move on to something else. You know, uh, we'll see how it goes. Don't know yet. <sighs> 
Thanks everybody who's been contributing, supporting, watching the videos in any way. It really helps. Uh, uh, the next video, uh, the next update will be out in a week. Hope to see you there.